Hey everybody, Haku here with my review for The Promised Neverland Episode 1. We have our uh, series premiere here, uh, and before I get into it, I will say that I have read the manga, but the way I normally do these reviews for anime and such is that I'm going to review it as if I haven't read the manga. So of course there are things that I'm seeing and that I saw in this episode that now that I know more of the mystery of this world, having read the manga, uh, I kind of get and make connections, but I've thought about it quite a bit on how to do this without spoiling anything for anyone. So there are certain things, like even if things are a hint or anything, I even if it's minor, I'm not even going to bring up that it is a hint for anything, uh, just because I don't want to spoil anyone at all. And I still think I can give a pretty detailed review and discussion of things without talking about that kind of stuff. Uh, one thing though, there is one point I want to bring up because I find it very interesting uh, for manga readers though, but I'll go do the entire video including the uh, outro and just stick around for after the outro if you want that extra point if you're a manga reader. Um, so uh, yeah, to start at the beginning, we've got uh, Emma Ray and Norman at the gate. And I like the scene, it was good, it has some good meaning to it, and one of the big questions for the scene that the characters were asking is, what is this protecting us from? And now at the end we have a bit of the mystery revealed, we know there are these monster demon things, we know that this is a farm, but we still don't know what the world beyond that gate, beyond the fence in the back, we don't know what that world is like uh, as far as the anime goes. So again, continuing on with this mystery, is, is it keeping them in? Is it protecting them from something? Uh, there's a lot of mystery surrounding that that I think is very good, and I think that's what this episode did the best job at. Uh, more than anything, the general theme, of course, is that it builds up this nice family, then shows what's dark about the universe um, that this is set in. But even then, I think what it did a very, very good job at is laying just a million different points in front of us and being like, okay, here's the mystery of the series. Uh, you're going to have to solve this as you're watching or watch it to see as it's solved. Um, and then we get the opening. I love the opening. I think the first time I watched it, I was maybe a little like, meh, on it. Um, but then after seeing it a few more times, because one thing that happened is I wasn't expecting this to come out yesterday from when I'm recording it, but I didn't have time to record this video yesterday or any time today before this. Um, so one thing that I think was good with me not being able to record was I had time to go watch some other people's videos, people that hadn't read the manga and see what their thoughts were. And this did a great job at setting out just a bunch of points and sort of having people wonder what's going on with all of them, but also it gave me time to look back at a lot of scenes, including the opening, and come to appreciate it a lot more. Um, so starting on the actual title card, I didn't notice the title was actually the date. Um, this is October 10th, 2045. It was on the calendar with Connie's name uh, marked on it at the very beginning. And we see that the time motif seems to be very, very important throughout this episode. We have shots to the calendar a lot. The title is the uh, date that it's on. Um, in the opening, I love we've got um, Isabella looking at the... Um, at the watch we have of course Ray's stopwatch and then the stopwatch appearing in the background as Norman's playing hide-and-seek there was this really good time motif that they went on with the calendars and the clocks or watches whatever same deal um, I thought that was all really really well done um, I thought the intro to talk more about the intro since I have time since I've looked over it like a lot I've watched it like a million times I love the song for it uh, some of the things they did well I really love that sort of, um, I, I don't want to call it like prison-ish, but like the board with the heights marked on it that they keep showing the characters in front of. We had uh, cool moments to show off Isabella with stuff there and Crone. Um, and then of course uh, I love the one panning shot from Don to Gilda. It was so good uh, to introduce those two, but it mainly focused on uh, Emma Norman and Ray. And that's another thing the episode did a great job at is when it comes to introducing characters, uh, that's another thing. I, I might say a character's name that their name hasn't been said in the episode yet because I don't really remember whose names were specifically said, uh, but none of the names are spoilers or relevant to anything. They're not hints for anything, so I might just stick with using names and say instead of saying just that one. 
Um, but uh, I like that we spent most of the episode, we didn't overwhelm us with characters like some shows do, even though there are 38 of them, we didn't overwhelm us with characters. We spent most of the time focusing on who Emma, Ray, and Norman are. Uh, how learning through what happened with the test that, and what, again, what happens with the hide-and-seek, that Norman is an absolute genius. Uh, and he's a very good uh, strategic mind, too. And then we have Ray, who's kind of more mysterious for right now, and I like that. I think the mystery for Ray is really good and really well done here. Uh, and it's something that I think a lot of manga readers will pick up on more, knowing different scenes and things from the future. Um, so, I thought Ray was handled well. They say, they say that he's as smart as uh, Norman, and that Norman says, Oh, you're a better strategist than me, and I like this that they say it, but they haven't shown us anything for Ray yet. Whereas Emma, Emma tries her hardest. Emma keeps up with them through hard work, and she's also the athletic one. And I like this, that there are two things going on there. I like that we have a female, uh, like, shonen jump protagonist that is just really freaking good. Because we have OP powers on Izuku and Asta, but Emma's out here, just 11-year-old girl being a badass. Emma's probably the most badass out of the three because she's just an 11-year-old girl going through all this. They're at a friggin' farm. Um, so that's one thing I love about her character. And in addition to that, it's the typical stereotype that you see in a lot of things, not just anime, where you have the sort of more... The girl is there to be the one who's the brains and to point out when the boy is do, doing something stupid, but the main character, whether he's a Luffy or a Naruto or whatever else, is there to be the bombastic, I'm going to do everything right, I'm going to save everyone, just the loud athletic one. But this is a switch on that where we have people like Ray and Norman who are more, a little bit more subdued, Norman less so, but more so with Ray. Uh, but they're the sort of mental side of things and the strategic guys, whereas Emma's the one with the dominant personality, the one who is uh, the physical, athletic one of the group, and also the one who is kind of holding everyone together, being the spirit of the group in a way, um, in the way that she is uh, wanting to save everyone there at the end, which I think is really good to note. And the way that she says she's happy there and wants to keep everyone together before she finds out the secret of things. Uh, but getting back to uh, going through the episode part by part, we have the introductions for everything and a lot of focus on the numbers on their necks that we later, of course, learn what that means. We get Anna and Gilda talk to each other, and one thing from my manga videos is I always talk about that Anna and Gilda energy, and we have Anna and Gilda energy first episode. Uh, but we see the tests, and we get introduced to kind of the perfect three here uh, with Norman, Emma, and uh, Ray getting perfect scores. One thing I thought was interesting was when we see the clipboard later in the episode, two of them didn't always get perfect scores, but one of them's basically always gotten perfect scores, like going back through the dates. Um, but Don challenges Norman. Again, I like how many speaking lines Don got and how we got to see his relationship with Connie. And I think that's very, very good to note, that we got to spend that time with Don. And he doesn't know about everything that's happened yet as of this episode. But we can say, if he finds out in the future, how is that going to affect his character? We've got set up for that already, which is good. So we have the hide-and-seek slash tag game that they play in the forest, which is really, really good. And they use that to establish characters' strengths and weaknesses. We see that Norman's weakness is that he can't keep up with some of the others physically, but he's able to outsmart Don and outsmart Emma, which is really good. We see Don's strength is he's like, okay, I'll be able to outrun you this time, Norman, but he gets outsmarted by uh, Norman's strategy and also him trying to uh, be the one to help Connie too. And then again with Emma getting introduced to her strength and weaknesses, say, seeing that out of all the kids there, she is the dominant one physically, but her, he even legitimately, literally said her kindness is her weakness, and he uses that in order to catch her. So all of that was very good. Uh, and then uh, we have sort of Ray's speech about how tag is basically just full-body chess. You have to think and strategize to go through with it. And I like 
again, the sort of guiding sentence he had with like, okay, Emma, what is it that Norman has that you don't? And she lists all these great qualities, and he's like, no, it's strategy. Um, but uh, yeah, then they transition to everyone being it but Norman, which is basically just a scene to lead everyone to the fence. Norma and Emma first reach there, uh, and then everybody else ends up there talking as well. Ray has, Ray has good lines, too, where he's like, Look at this. The fence is short. I don't see any danger on the other side. What's it keeping in or out? What's dangerous about it? Again, being the one to bring up the questioning of these things, of the rules. So I thought that was cool. Uh, we get the information that everyone leaves by the time they're 12. I saw some people in their videos who hadn't read the manga getting confused. Uh, this isn't a spoiler. What they mean by leaving by 12, because then they would be like confused when they were like, so why did Connie leave? Um, I'm not going to tell you why certain people leave at certain times, but what they meant is by the time they're 12, they're all gone. No one stays there past 12. It's not like on your 12th birthday you're shipped out. It's just that by happenstance, no, but, er, there's reason behind it, obviously, but no one makes it there longer than when they're 12 years old before they have to leave. And also, they find it weird that nobody ever sends letters back. We see a lot of screen time and a line from my boy Phil. I was so happy. Phil Hype. Um, he is absolutely adorable. Um, and again, just so, so many hints at things through all of their dialogue with each other that I thought was really well done. Uh, transitioning straight from that, from Connie giving a really heavy death flag speech uh, to her about to leave, and it... I feel so bad because she's like, I was slower than everyone else. It's like, ah, oh, no, that for some reason that makes you just that much more, it makes you want to protect them that much more. Um, but uh, one thing we see as she's leaving, Emma and Don getting emotional and crying, and of course that shows that they're emotional characters, but it also shows their connection to Connie, which is good for Emma's character moving forward to show her connection before Connie's death. And in addition to that, to show what's going on with Don because it's an important fact. What characters do and don't know is important, so he doesn't know about what happened with Connie right now, but him having that connection with her is important to his character. Um, we have Isabella's song. Hearing that for the first time in the anime, I wasn't expecting it right now, actually, because I've only read the manga once, so I don't fully remember every little detail, so hearing that here was interesting. Um, Emma then finds little Bernie, or I think the subs officially translated it as Bunny rather than Bernie. Um, but either way, Ray tells them that, ah, there's still time to go, and Emma and Norman leave to go bring Bernie to Connie. Now, for some reason, maybe my memory is just crap, but I could have sworn in the manga they left out a scene here, I could have sworn that Norman had to pick a lock for him and Emma to leave to go to that gate. Um... And I feel like they left that scene out of the anime episode. Maybe because they needed to fit everything in to get to where they wanted to to end the episode at. Um, and I guess it's really not all that important, so it's not really a problem that they left it out. Uh, but I just figured I'd bring it up here as it was something that was just left out. Um, so from there they find this truck. And one thing that was again good about this episode was I was so on edge. Uh, and again, me watching a lot of people's videos, whether they were reactions or reviews, I love the people in the reactions being like really, really tense, like saying it is too quiet right now. Um, and things that I was feeling, but seeing other people articulate that as well was really cool. Um, one thing I liked about the scene, though, is the use of camera angles. They had so many good camera angles in that scene. And one particular shot that always sticks in my head is when Norman is walking toward the truck and the camera's following along behind him but like bobbing up and down with his footsteps is really really good. I think that's probably my favorite shot from the entire scene. Um, so all that was really good. Then uh, from there we get our first look and well Connie's dead of course but we get our first look at the monsters slash demons whatever you want to call them. We get to see them and we get this information that this is a farm but it's not a farm that random workers can just pick some scraps from this is high quality product meant to be sold to the rich so what that tells us is that uh, basically demons as to are to humans in our world and humans there are as to like pigs or cows 
So uh, thinking about it like that, this isn't just your normal sort of like, I don't, I don't want to say like a factory farm. It's just like, like not your normal farm. This is like a high-end specialty farm where the food is uh, going to rich customers and stuff. So uh, that, again, is important and makes sense for why they're treated so hard to say well because they're all meant to be killed, but you get what I mean. So um, that's important as well. Then uh, they say that the three full scores are going to be harvested soon, and uh, then one of the demons, monsters, whatever, finds Bernie under the truck, which is entirely important, mostly for Isabella that we see at the end. Ray welcomes Norma and Emma back, or Norman and Emma back, after um, they have this really good scene where they're out in the field and uh, talking about what they just saw. Uh, but Ray welcomes them back. Emma says that. She needs to escape, but she won't leave anyone behind, which again is a huge central point here, is that escaping seems hard on its own, but how are you going to escape without leaving people behind? Uh, and then in addition to that, we see Ray is listening in when this happens. We have this really good music track going on in the background, and then just hard cut to Isabella with Bernie, which was amazing, because what that signifies, and I saw a lot of people understood what it signified watching their video, so I feel okay saying it, what that signifies is Bernie wasn't supposed to be there. She knew that Gandhi didn't bring Bernie with her, so she sees that laying on the ground and has to think, how did that get there? So from that, she must know that somebody knows at this point, um, which has a, a lot of repercussions for a lot of people, if that's the case. Uh, then we get the ending. I loved the ending. I can't talk too much about the ending and what it included because of lots of spoilers. Um, but yeah, I loved the ending and the imagery they decided to use. Uh, so some thoughts as a whole. I thought they did a great job at making the episode incredibly tense. I thought that when I was watching, time just flew by. I was like so zoned into what was going on. It felt like it had been like four or five minutes and yet I was like 15 minutes in when I checked the time. Um, the animation was very unique. Uh, there was a lot of movement going on, and it was very high detailed. You could tell a lot of work went into it. The one complaint I've kind of seen, but then again, even the people complaining were also saying it was a good thing at the same time, so my thoughts on it are kind of the same. If you went through and did some freeze frames, you would probably see some really weird facial animations, because there was a lot of times with movement or with exaggerated facial features where like their eyes and mouth would just fly up to their forehead or something uh, as they were moving their head and face around uh, and the placement of their facial features went kind of weird uh, when that happened but it also fits the manga artwork because the manga artwork can be like that a lot of the time but what people were saying is like any good anime you look at and if you take freeze frames and stuff they're off model a lot of the time uh, that just goes with over exaggerating and trying to put in that much emotion that's what happens uh, because you're not meant to look at it frame by frame you're meant to look at it as a moving medium uh, and that's how your eyes are meant to pick it up so that's one thing that's like not really a negative but you can bring up uh, I thought the OST was good too I really liked it um, and I like that there were a lot of details with the mystery. Like my main point at the beginning was, they gave us all these different points uh, for us to try to draw our own conclusions from and figure things out. And I thought that was a really good way to tell the story. Um, so as a score, I really, really liked it. But I'm not going to give it a perfect score yet. I think that maybe I'd be like even more on board if I hadn't read the manga. But it's one of those things where I saw so many people's videos where they were like, I had no idea about what the series was about, but now I'm completely hooked. So that means it was very successful as a first episode. Um, but at the same time, I think that things can get even more emotionally connected. I know many times where I was like super emotionally connected, tearing up and everything, uh, while reading the manga, like multiple times. So this episode didn't do that to me yet, but I feel like there's going to be a lot there. I'm going to give it close to a perfect score, like 9.75 farms out of 10. Um, but at this, also, one thing they didn't play up, they had to have mentioned that this was Gracefield House. Uh, I thought the episode was going to be titled that, because I believe the first chapter of the manga is titled that. Um, 
So it was interesting there that they didn't really uh, bring up as much as it felt like was in the manga, bring up that this is called Gracefield House. Uh, but either way, 9.75 out of 10. I think just a little bit more emotional connection would have pushed me over to giving it a perfect score, but it was still amazing and still definitely did its job as a premiere episode. Um, so that's it. I'm going to do the outro now, and then I still have those two points for manga readers if you want to stick through uh, after that. But like if you did like the video, comment down there to tell me what you thought of this episode and what you thought of my thoughts on it and all of that. Subscribe for more. Uh, the Promise Neverland, much more on the channel. Currently, I'm also reviewing week to week when it comes to anime, the second core of Tensei Shitara, Slime Dr. Ken, and Tawato Majutsu no Index 3. In addition to that, I am doing the second season of Fukiken no Mononokien. Uh, that's airing right now. And in addition to that, there's a bunch of other like manga, light novel, webtoon stuff on the channel uh, for you to check out if you're interested. Follow on Twitter if you want. I can try to keep you updated there and stuff for the channel. Uh, it's generally the best place for updates. And for Discord, we can just talk there about whatever. If you want a link to the server, just ask and I'll give you one. It's free and open for anyone. Um, I will say though, uh, yeah, that's it. So two things that I wanted to bring up that I noticed as a manga reader, but I thought were too spoilery to put in the review proper. Uh, so tune out if you don't want to be spoiled, because these two things are pretty spoilery. Um, yeah, definitely tune out now. Giving you that chance. Okay, now I'm going to talk about it. One thing I thought that was cool here, that, again, I haven't reread the manga or anything, but you could really heavily tell how Ray was leading everyone around. Uh, just all the things he did, like pointing out does this fence look dangerous? Making them question it. Uh, pointing Emma and Ray towards going there being like, you know, um, uh, Connie hasn't left yet. It hasn't been that long. I still see lights out there. Ray, and even with the hide and seek and stuff, Ray kind of directing the other characters around, I thought was really well done here. And in addition to that, um, another subtle clue for something that's a big reveal in the future that I thought was good was when Ray remembers that Emma wanted to uh, ride a giraffe when nobody else remembers that. And of course, those of you that have read the manga, uh, who should be all the only people left here, know the reason why that is, why he remembers that. Um, and I thought that that was great to give that hint here too. Uh, so it was really, really well written. But that's it. Uh, thank you all for watching. I just wanted to bring up those two things because I thought they were really well done here. Uh, but I also thought they were a little bit inappropriate to put in the uh, main review because of spoilers. So yeah, that's it. Thank you once again for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, thank you for everything, and I'll see you all next time.